Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here and welcome to Let's Try Knights of Pen and Paper Plus One Edition. This is a cool indie RPG game by Behold Studios. It's published by Paradox Interactive and it's kind of a meta thing. I think everyone who's ever played a pen and paper role-playing game like Dungeons and Dragons has, uh, has always imagined the idea of making a game where you play people who are playing a game. And that's exactly what this is. You have, there's a dungeon master and there are players. And so when you make your characters for this game, you are picking a player and then giving that person a character to play in this game. And I don't know, it's, it's a wonderful sort of comedic, uh, tongue in cheek role playing adventure. And anyway, I think it's fantastic. The combat is a very sort of Final Fantasy style, um, like very old school retro. Lots of fun. So anyway, let, let's go in. Uh, there's not a whole lot to the settings, you know, music, audio, language, promo code to unlock more content, I believe is what this is. Um, and uh, yeah, new game. It's got the save slots. It was originally out for a console, uh, and this is the PC version, uh, which has been uh, remarkably... There have been more additions. It's a very, very good uh, version of the game. I'm not going to call it a port. I think it's more than a port. It's just, it's just fun and awesome. So let's go in and start a new slot here. And so here we are, we are playing in someone's garage or basement, I don't know, uh, and we get to assemble our party. Here's our game master, and he's got his pet robot. We can actually shop here, you can see the gold in the top right corner. This is gold that is used to, I don't know, unlock new content for the game in general, uh, including like outside of the game. It's used both in-game and out of the game, as far as I can tell. For example, we can use it to buy snack, like cookies and chips and cake, uh, and drinks, you know, soda cans, coffee, milk, and these have uh, effects in game um, and actually they have a duration for example I actually have a soda can and soda bottle in play right now so I get some extra gold going I got 20, 12 minutes left on that uh, objects I've got a holy grail on the table so that we can have up to five players in our party uh, instead of the normal maximum of three for example you can uh, buy miniatures it gives us plus one to all skills for example we can choose different tables which have a variety of different effects we are uh, currently running the wood table for bonus XP which seems fine we can replace our game master because right now we've got the comic store guy worst GM ever uh, but we can replace him with the dungeon master the karate rat so splinter yoga and uh, Dr. Scientist. Uh, and, you know, again, this one, this guy's got the bonus XP, so I figured, oh, I'll keep him for now, and that's fine. And so on and so forth. There's lots we can do. We've got a TARDIS in the corner over here for plus 15 uh, extra mana. Uh, so that's kind of cool, but yeah, for now, what we have to do is we have to start filling out our party, and we need at least two players for this. And uh, let's take a look at what that is. So, to add a new player, we click on the seat, and then we pick him. First, we've got to pick the actual player. Who is going to be playing this character? Is it Mr. John? Is it going to be a nerd? Pizza guy? Jock? Woofy? Little brother? Rocker? Paris? Who's got the shopper passive? And that's the thing. Each one of these uh, players has a different passive. That's the only difference between uh, these guys. So the shopper, for example, is a 50% discount on the blacksmith. Um, ET gets bonus magic points per turn. Uh, the hipster has a 10% increased damage range, uh, and I think that's 10% range is in like plus or minus damage, so it's just more general randomness. Uh, but it might just be a positive increase. Hopefully, that's what it is. 10% increased damage range. Hopefully, it's, maybe it's just more max damage. Um, the flowers gets uh, one extra point on dice rolls, so she gets plus one to all dice rolls. Grandma, who generates extra threat. Ms. Goldberry, who seems to just be good at all the things. Gamer, plus one skill duration, uh, which is actually pretty good because, um, for example, if we give him the rogue, and I'll show you the class in a second, but the rogue's got the concussion blow that disables a target for one turn. Well, presumably his duration would be two turns instead, which seems to be a pretty strong, I mean, that's 100% more effect, right? So if that's true, actually, I should, I should make this guy a rogue. I'm not 100% sure if that works as well. I don't have a ton of it, of experience with these, but you can see the vanish, so there'd be an extra turn there. But I'm hoping it works on disable as well. If so, if so, that will be very potent. Um, special guest, who you may recognize, he's got the Magicka passive. Of course, this is one of the characters from uh, Magicka. It's a little bit more obvious if I give him a different hat over here. So he starts with more magic points. Um, and then we're back to Mr. John. So the passives that we skipped earlier, the 10% more experience points, which is always going to be good. Uh, discount for resurrecting this player, which I don't know. I don't think I want to rely on someone dying to take advantage of their bonus. Pizza guy is just cheaper. Now the first couple of players you get into the game are free, but after that adding more characters does cost you some gold. Um, 
I've got my jock here who uh, gets plus one bonus to attack, which is pretty good. Now, I don't know how all the uh, math works out in game yet, but you can see his attack rating here is a two. Um, that's unchanged here, so this is after that. So that's what would go from a two to a three, which seems to be a pretty good combo. The uh, rogue does start with an attack of three, and I think, he, yeah, he's the only one to start with an attack of three. So that, that plus one bonus to attack seems to be pretty strong, unless I'm mistaken. Wolfie regenerates one hit points per turn, so he might make for an excellent tank. Little brother's got a bonus to initiative. Um, and actually, in my little test game, I, I stuck him on the rogue because I figured the ability to uh, stun as an opening move uh, with the little brother would probably be pretty strong. And the rocker's got the health, and there we go, we're back to the, uh, the to Paris. So yeah, rocker's got the bonus to health. So there's a lot of different ways to assemble it. And yeah, the um, each character can have up to four abilities. Now, you don't start with any of these. You have to unlock them as your actual character's character levels up in-game. Uh, so the uh, the mage, I quite like. The, the meteor attack is very potent, does a lot of damage uh, to everything on the board, which is pretty good, but even the direct damage is pretty high. Now, the mage definitely is a massive, massive damage dealer. Uh, the rogue, I also find to be pretty competent. I mean, this passive of plus one extra damage on every hit, and then, you know, get some double strikes in there or something. Now, I don't know if you get the poison on every strike, but it still, you know, adds up quite a lot. Uh, overall. So, um, we're going to leave some of these for you guys to sort of explore at some point. Uh, Paladin is certainly a very good tank, as is the Warrior. Rogue is a damage dealer. Mage is a damage dealer. Druid is a bit of a healer. I guess healer, um, damage dealer hybrid. He heals over time, actually, instead of instant. Um, and can also sleep a target for one round. Um, one round is a base. Now, I assume this duration goes up as you level it up, so it starts to become a pretty potent disable, although it does wake them up uh, when hit, so uh, I'm not sure. I think the difference between the Druid and the Rogue is the Rogue's stun only ever lasts one round, as far as I can tell, so I suspect the Hibernate goes up. Um, you know, give everyone magic points. So a neat little support role. Uh, Cleric is definitely a good direct healer, so like, heals everyone in your group, heals a direct person, smacks someone and self-heals, and this just debuffs people. Now, I actually have been thinking about it, and I think what I'd like to do is I would like to make a Grandma Cleric be my tank, because the Grandma gets an extra two to threat right built in, which seems to be pretty good. So an extra 100% to threat is, is what it looks like here. Um, and, that, and that's pretty strong. Like, for example, if we compare the Paladin here, who's got a, who's got a passive, extra one 100% threat. Like, I, I I don't know exactly what the numbers all represent. This can be leveled up, though. Um, so I, that may be the difference, but I'm wondering if a cleric with a self-heal actually makes for a good tank. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious to give this a try, so we'll go ahead and we'll help have Grandma playing a cleric as our primary player. Back in my day, we used to play this with pen and paper. Uh, and then we're going to add a second player, and we're definitely, I'm going to definitely go for a mage, because that is a uh, it's a lot of damage that comes from the mage, and I'm going to go ahead and use our special guest, the magical player, for the extra magic points, just so that we can uh, fire off a little bit more. And technically that is enough to get started, um, but I'm going to go ahead and add some more people to the party. We'll, um, we'll go ahead and... Uh, should we add the warrior after all? We can make him a damage dealing warrior. You know what? I like the rogue. I'm going to go for a rogue, and we will use... Um, you know what, we'll go ahead and use, we have to include our little brother, so this is going to be kind of a family game. We've got our grandmother, we've got our little brother, and it does cost us gold to add this third player. Uh, maybe we'll call that good. Um, we've got a healer and a couple of damage dealers, and the healer will hopefully be kind of tanky. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started and accept our first quest from our Dungeon Master. So, is everyone ready? All character sheets are set up? Actually, I should make my comic book guy accent, but I don't think I can pull that off. Yes, let's rock on! Rock on? Come on, is your character from the future? So there's great dialogue in this game. Yeah, that's right, extra experience points will be awarded to those who are role-playing, okay? Before we start, you should know that you can set the difficulty of this game by increasing decreasing the amount of monsters you fight. So the adventure begins now. As you wake up, you can hear the cold whispering of the wind. You can't remember anything that happened before. I like the scene change to represent sort of your imagination. All you know is that you're a group of friends locked up in a tower prison for no reason at all, and everyone's calling you assassins. While searching for a way out, you notice that the prison bars have been broken by some kind of magic. Let's get out of this place! As you leave the cell, as you leave the cell, you face some guards that are clearly unhappy to see you there. Hey, you're not supposed to be inside the cell. Or you're supposed to be inside the cell, not outside it. 
You don't want to get hurt, do you? Get back in your cell already. Ha, you'll regret that. I'm not returning to that cage for no good reason. Get back. Alright, so to complete this quest, we have to kill two guards in total. But we don't have to fight them all at once, which is kind of interesting. Um, so we can see the difficulty of the battle. Right now, there's there's no one we're facing yet. We have to add the guards. This is their stats. They do uh, they have an attack of, of one to one. They have nine hit points each. So we'll add at least one. When we as males go for two, and this is the, the number we need to defeat to clear out of here. I could go ahead and add up to five if I wanted to. This would certainly be worth more experience points. But for now, uh, let's go and just fight two. We'll leave uh, we'll leave these two on the left hand side over here and get this started. Challenge accepted. So everyone has rolled initiative at this point. You can see people have an initiative stat on their uh, character sheet. Little brother, of course, is almost always going to go first because he's got that plus one, five from his passive. Um, and uh, I believe it's just a plus nine bonus to the d20 check. So he's not guaranteed to go first, but it's pretty likely. Now, later on, I, I demonstrated these abilities, but right now all my abilities are at level zero. I don't actually have any of these right now. So the only thing I can do is a basic attack. I could also drink one of my potions that the game starts you off with. Um, I can go and do the guard thing or run away, I guess. Uh, but I'll just do the basic attack, which can be done by just clicking on my target. I can also just click on the weapon. It tells me how much damage I expect to do. And so I'll attack number this guy who is number two in the initiative. And there we go. I hit him for three points of damage. Of course, remember, they've got nine hit points. So these guys have just attacked as uh, initiative two and three. And now we're going to have our cleric tank go. And again, all I can basically do is a basic attack. So we're going to focus fire on number two, try to get him down as quickly as possible. And our wizard says so the attack is two of two. And in need, we'll do the two points of damage right there. So you can see the plus one damage is actually pretty notable at low levels. Now, I don't know if that really scales up very much. Um, so maybe the jock is not, you know, very good in the long term, but early on he's pretty confident. So we'll go ahead and keep wailing in number two. He's dead. Everyone moves up one slot in the initiative order. And we'll just keep wailing away over here. Boom! And he's gone. Victory! We've got 110 XP. Uh, you get bonus XP, I believe, for the size of your group. And we also collected three gold, which is quite nice. Now, uh, you can see we gained some XP there. We've still got our health is down a little bit, and uh, maybe we want to rest. So we could do that here, or we could escape the prison right away by continuing on with the quest here. If we wanted to, we could also decide to fight more fights, you know, just to farm up more XP if we felt like it. But I'm going to go ahead and continue the quest by clicking on the exclamation mark. And guard number three, who I guess we left alone, or left alive, sound the alarm, we have a situation on the second floor. Uh-oh, the alarm. I think we should sneak past the next guards. Roll dice. Nice roll, you sneak past the other guards while everyone is too busy looking for you. As you reach the first level of the tower, a strange man covered in a dark cloak is waiting for you on his horse-drawn wagon. We shall leave this place for now. Hurry up! I like how his name is just Strange Guy. I don't know who you are, but we'll have to trust you for now. The strange guy rode with you to Default Village, where your adventure is just about to begin. Clearly this dungeon master is as good with names as I am when I DM. So it is day five, again we still have 209 gold. We've completed our quest. Pro tip, you may choose whichever quest you'd like, but the main quest will be marked with stars. So we've got a little bit of extra XP for completing that. In fact, we have leveled up exactly what we need to reach level two. And so we will go and we will spend our one skill point. So I cannot level up passive. See, I, that's what I thought. Like the numbers didn't really mesh here because um, it was saying on the other thing two and then 100% to threat. Uh, but I don't know, maybe this scales with level or there's something else going on, but I was pretty sure the two wasn't, 100, wasn't double threat. So there may be a li limit to the tankiness of grandma, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, now I'm going to spend the first skill point on the smite ability so we can do more damage. You can see that it clearly does quite a bit more damage than my basic attack. Uh, and also will self heal me, which is nice. It does use some magic points, which is only two though, which isn't too bad. I have 23 in the pool, they will replenish when I rest. That doesn't sound too bad, so we're going to go ahead and level up smite. And we'll go to the next character. So we've got our special guest, the mage. Now I'm going to make the mage, um, I'm going to mostly focus on meteor, I think, because I love the splash damage from this. Really good when you're facing a whole lot of foes. Remember, those guards had nine hit points. This will do nine to 11 points of damage to every foe in battle. So that's quite good. It also scales up kind of decently. So we'll go ahead and pick that up as well. And then our rogue. Um, the rogue uh, will definitely be more of a single target uh, person. 
Uh, we can get the Vanish, but I think I'm gonna wait for later to pick that up. Uh, I'm just trying to try to decide between the Concussion Blow, which is plus 10% to attack damage, so that's a little bit more, or the Double Strike, um, which it's minus 40%, but it's on two attacks, so each attack will do 60% of the normal damage. So effectively, I'm doing 120 damage with this, uh, unless there's something else uh, going on. So the Double Strike seems to add the most. On the other hand, the uh, Poison, one extra damage right now is actually the equivalent of 25% extra damage, so this would almost be better at this point. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and take the double strike just because it feels more interesting. So we'll level that up. So everyone is leveled up, which is great. And now what do we want to do? Um, well, we can, if we click anywhere, we get our menu here. We've got, again, we can just sort of pick a fight uh, if we want some extra XP. We can, uh, we can travel, we're gonna look more at this later. Right now we're in the default village. There's a star here to indicate this is where the main quest is and uh, the tavern is the only thing that matters. The content here is generally going to be level one content so it's gonna be pretty good for leveling up. We can also look around, so we've got the Den of Evil which is level four, the Sunset Castle over here which is level seven and so on and so forth. So um, what else we got? We can, um, we're gonna check the quest later. We can rest, but we're actually in pretty good shape. This is the, I guess, the blacksmith or the potion maker, I'm not sure, where we can buy some items. And some of them are relatively cheap. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and grab three beaks and give each one of my characters the plus one to attack rating, because that seems like a pretty good idea. Um, I'm actually kind of inclined to get this weak emerald as well. We can scroll this too. Get some really high level items. But the weak emerald ring is level three, so I can't even use them right now, so that's okay. We have coupons for our next purchases. I like the little dialogue thrown in. So we're gonna check their inventory, and so I'm just gonna grab a beak to each person. So now if I get out of here and check their stats, their attack. Yeah, because I think they were 2-2, right? So let's go to the mage, let's take away the beak. Yeah, 2-2. So now with the beak, he's 3-3. Three, three. So that's a pretty decent addition to the combat. That being said, think about it. Is the mage really gonna use his auto attack very often? No, he's mostly going to be using this, and that doesn't really help. So instead, if I'd gotten the item that gives plus four magic, that would be a whole other casting of this, plus it should increase the damage. Let's take a look. Right now we're doing nine to 11 magical damage. Um, so let's go here and let's pick up the, the bat amulet and see what that does. This is my precious, yes. Uh, so let's give our mage the bat amulet see what that does for us. So the magic indeed went up from 47 to 51, so that's a whole other casting. Um, and it says that MP also increases spell damage. Now I don't know if I need that, if I need stream for that to take place. I think magic will always increase the magic damage. It's just that going from 47 to 51 wasn't enough of a jump to really make a difference that was noticeable here. Still that's an extra casting and that might come in pretty handy, so we'll, we'll call that good enough. Um, there's also the shop here, but this is the shopping for the room, right? So if I wanted some more snack buffs, for example, uh, that's where I would do it. So there's different, the, and the room buffs last, um, persist, right, beyond this game. Because this slave, save slot is just for this one party here. Uh, because you actually start off with like 800 and change gold or something like that. So um, I, I unlocked some things for my entire room, like the, uh, the golden, the oh, holy grail, golden grail? The Holy Grail. Uh, so I spent that, and that was like the entire campaign, or the entire meta game, as opposed to this particular party. So it's kind of interesting that they've got this duality going on. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab another quest over here. So um, we can create our own quest. There are a few categories. Slay creatures, which always gives bonus experience points. There's collect items, which gives bonus gold. There is an escort quest, which has a chance to gain equipment, but notice that the only escort quest available is level 30, so let's not do that one. There's a rescue quest, so it's got an ex another chance to gain items, which is nice, but notice the level as well. Uh, oh, we could probably do the rescue grandpa level if we wanted to. Um, and then we're back to slay. You'll notice that the slay quest has a star here for the rats and also the bats, and that's because they advanced the main quest. So we're gonna go ahead and slay the rats and see what the quest is like. You must save the villagers inside that house. You're so mean. Deal with my monsters. All right, we gotta kill seven rats. I mean, that is the classic level one quest, right, in RPGs is the rat slaying. All right, so we will go ahead and battle. Uh, so we've gotta slay four or seven. Now the max we can do in a battle is four. 
uh, sorry, five. Um, so we may as well just do four and then three. Uh, the bigger the group, the more sort of XP in general we would get. So uh, I guess that was it. The bonus XP that I said earlier was for the size of, of the group. Uh, it's, it's the size of the enemy group that you get bonus XP for. So, you know, each one of these rats will be worth, I don't know, 100 XP, for example. But the fact that I'm fa facing, facing four at once, I think will give me a 30% bonus. So they'll each be worth 130 XP. So instead of 400 XP total, I would get uh, 520. I am making up these numbers, so that's not what I'm actually going to get. But it's better to fight as many in a group as possible. I suppose I could go five then. Um, oops. Sorry, I changed enemy types. And you can do that. You can come up with a mixed party, right? I could throw a bat in here for some goddamn reason. Um, or an elite giant rat. But we'll go normal rats. I'll go ahead and, and add five, and we'll see what kind of XP bonus we can get out of that. Uh, they have nine hit points. One meteor should actually wipe out this entire group. They're level one rats, what can you say, right? Uh, unfortunately, my spellcasters have crap for initiative, so we're going to get beat down pretty hard before that happens. Uh, my rogue can double strike one, and hopefully kill one, so let's go and start with the guy with the number 2 XP. Hit him twice? Ooh, not quite, so we only hit him for 3 each, which seems a little low, actually. A little bit of damage. Oh, we have some physical resistance, and so they do they, probably. Now it's the wizard's turn, so let's see how they like Meteor. Do they have any magic resistance? Boom, rocks fall, everyone dies. Later on, that's not going to be a thing. So there you go, you can see the plus 40% group bonus. So, you know, figure out how much they were worth. And So we definitely got a lot more XP because I fought a group of five. And one of the items you can unlock in the shop, uh, the crown, the BK crown. That would actually only cost eight gold, so we could fight seven monsters at once. In hindsight, I would like to do that. Just farm those rats, we would have gotten a lot more. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that. Why not? Uh, if I had the money, I'd grab some loaded dice or something, because that is going to be quite potent. Really potent stuff. So there we go. So we need to uh, kill two more rats to actually finish the quest, so let's go ahead and do that. In fact, let's... Uh, uh, yeah, rats. Let's go ahead and fight a group of seven. What could possibly go wrong, right? We can still just nuke them with one fireball, assuming we don't get killed off. Oh, and we got an ex initiative three on the wizard now, which is pretty good. On my rogue, I actually won't even bother spending the uh, mana points for my double strike, since I know I won't kill one. I'll just go and just slap one normally. Oh, I actually rolled five points of damage there. You'll notice I'm getting a plus one mana right now. Uh, one of the items I have means that every time I hit something, uh, I actually get one mana back. So if I ran out, I can just auto attack and get most of it back. All right, meteor. Boom. Wow, I should just do this level 1 fight with my wizard over and over and over again. 60% bonus group XP, quite a bit more. And some gold. We have leveled up, so let's go and pick up something else. So I've already picked up the smite, um, which is pretty good. I think I might grab... Um, ooh, it's a hard decision. You know what, I'm going to grab a circle of healing, just in case we run into another big group and the damage gets kind of spread around. We can use one circle of healing to help everyone out, so that'll be pretty good. My mage... Uh, I think I'm just going to level up my Meteor to a second level. Uh, raises 2 damage, increases the mana points by 2.5. So it'll go from 10 to 12. Actually, already, the fact that he's leveled up, instead of doing 9 to 11, he is doing 10 to 12. And I believe that's because his magic went up in general. Uh, the magic cost, the mag mana points required, is still just 10. But if I level this up, now it's going to cost 12. Technically, it's like 12.5, but I think it rounds down. But you can see the damage went up as well, and there's a lot of value there. And my rogue, well, I've got the double strike, and so what I'm going to do is actually level up the poison. Note, though, if I do level up the double strike, plus five attack damage for both strikes. So that's uh, it's worth quite a bit, but I'll go ahead and increase the poison. The increase in the double strike also increases the mana point cost by two, actually. By two or two, two? By two, so it costs three. And it still allows me seven attacks before I run out of magic, but that would actually be kind of tight. So I'll go ahead and grab the poison just to add some passive damage, and we'll see if we can notice if it adds it to each attack or not, because that'll be kind of interesting. And that's it, so my whole party's leveled up. Turn in the quest. You did it! Extra gold, extra XP. Yes, I'm awesome. And let's, uh, let's grab the next quest. So, um, apparently we still have rat killing as a start main quest, as well as the bats. We'll, we'll continue with the rats, may as well polish them off, and then we'll move on to the rat quest, which is actually quite a lot of fun. Girl approaches the group and cries out in desperate voice. Is she cute? The least you can do is fill our adventure with beautiful girls. Fair enough, her charisma is 19. 
Wow, that is actually really impressive. Uh, there's Commoner Girl is her name. There's a rat infestation in the village. Please, could you deal with it as fast as possible? The Commoner Girl is really frightened. You can see it in her eyes. You're helping not only her, but the whole village as well. All right, take care of the rat infestation in Default Village. We need to kill five rats. Oh. All right, in fact, oh, yeah. Let's go ahead with Group of Seven again for maximum XP, since we know they're easy to kill. Oh, my wizard actually won the initiative, which is probably the single best thing ever. Rocks fall, everyone dies. Alright, we definitely, definitely need to go to some uh, higher difficulty stuff. In fact, I'm going to level up one more time, so even though I'm going to higher difficulty stuff, it's still going to be relatively easy. Uh, let's go ahead and pump some points into the smite. Um, we're going to... Should probably add some single target damage, to be honest. Especially since it's a lot cheaper. I like the fireball. Deep freeze is not bad. It also throws in a stun. But we already have one stun in the party. And yeah, we can get the extra magic points. So I can like keep alternating between these two. But let's, let's throw in a fireball. Just keep it interesting. And... Um... Oh yeah, we don't actually have the stun yet. I forgot. Oh, maybe I should have done that. You know what, let's go for pure damage, upgrade the double strike, like that. So minus 35% attack on each stab, and oh yeah, the cost went up as well. So we might actually want to get one of those, uh, you know what, um, this thing, the bat amulet, let's give it to our rogue, since it's going to probably, oops, no, since we might need the extra attacks at that point. All right. Maybe the rumors are true! You really are great warriors! Wait here! She quickly goes inside her house. What is this, a bathroom break? So many rat corpses on the ground, you're starting to earn the respect from the villagers. Alright, let's go on the bat slaying quest. Yeah, so that's the only one there. Bats, bats, bats. Bonus XP. The annoying bat sounds heard throughout the village are about to drive you insane when a nearby old man speaks up. Old man? Where are all the girls? Old man. The bats are eating all the villagers' food. They fly about every night. You already know what must be done. We need to stock more food. Winter is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nicely done. Maybe you could look into the bat cave to avoid more attacks in the future. All right. Deal with a group of bats that are terrifying everyone in default village while eating all their food. And eating all their food. Battles. We need to kill five bats. And the bats are definitely going to be a little harder. Um, let, let's just stick with the five and see how it goes. Cheats won't help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right, so a rogue first. Let's go and do a double strike. So actually, let's take a look here. Um, our attack is now eight to ten, which is certainly decent. We're getting 35% less, so um, that was going to mean like six or seven points of damage. Uh, but theoretically, it should add one on every hit. So, again, maybe 7 or 8 per hit. We might be able to one-shot a bat. Let's take a look. Double strike. 5, 6. It might have some resistances, though. It's hard, hard to tell. I don't know how all the math works out yet. Alright, let's meteor everyone. Can't one-shot them, so now we're going to take a lot more damage. We've been hurt a little bit here with our extra threat. Luckily, we do have the ability to self-heal. So we will... Uh, We'll hit the guy who's got the most health over here, and actually do 12 points of damage to him, which is pretty good. Actually, slightly more than the rogue did, as I recall. I'm going to try the attack again, see if maybe I just rolled low. 6 and 6 is 12. Hmm, interesting. And you know what? Let's just kill the last two. Probably should have just auto-attacked them, but there you go. Lots of XP. We might level up one more time. Not quite. Close, though. As you can see, sometimes NPCs have good tips for your quests or where to go next. Stay alert. We appreciate your willingness to help us. We really need all the help we can get. The king has been so weird lately. Everything is quite different from the way it was before. See what I mean? Let's continue our adventure. Looks like the bats have returned to their cave. You should investigate further or they'll come back eventually. Oh, that's enough to level up, actually. The quest XP. So let's go and spend a few more points. Um, more smite. And more explosions. I like area effect stuff. And you know what? Let's grab one level of concussion blow in case we decide we want to stun something. Alright, so uh, we still have the bat sling quest that we can continue, basically the next step of it, so let's do that. 
Do you remember what the old man told you in the last task? Uh, no. I'm used to f skipping all the chat and flavor messages in games. Are those even necessary anyway? <sighs> then sometimes you should read more because sometimes you'll find some useful tips and info. Whatever, what did the old man tell us anyway? The old man told you that Default Village will probably be attacked again. You should head to the Den of Devil and make sure they, they won't leave that place anymore. Kill most bats in Den of Devil, which is a terrible name. Sometimes you'll need to travel to complete. Yes, we have to travel to the Den of Devil to continue, which is right over here. You can see by the star that we've got a quest over there. Level 4 zone. I'm not sure what the 75% indicates. Well, anyway, we're going to travel to it. It might be chance of like a random encounter. Uh, so we'll travel, it costs us two gold. You'll see die rolls over here, which is the chance to become attacked. If you roll poorly, you can get attacked on the way there, random encounters. Alright, so, we're in the Den of Devil. Let's kill stuff. So we got to kill six bats in one or more battles to complete the quest. So let's battle. You know what? The last battle wasn't terrible. We did increase our meteor as well. Let's uh, let's go up to six. See if we can finish it off in one battle. Challenge accepted. Oh, and we've got our uh, our wizard rolled a really really good initiative. So uh, he might even be able to mop everything up quite quickly. Um, let's do our double strike, and we're gonna start with uh, this guy because he's got the highest initiative. Not that it really matters. Mm, it's not great. Kill everyone. Oh, so close. So very close. We're going to save our MP. We're just going to uh, auto attack this one for the kill. And then same thing with the rogue. 11 points of damage. Easy. Victory. That is a lot of XP. Again, we might level up one more time. No, not quite. You do level up very quickly at low levels, of course, but I'm sure it's going to slow down. We have the option of tenting and resting here, but every night, every tick of heal, there's actually a roll that there might be a random encounter. So there's always a risk. Let's continue. Well done for now. What? For every bat you killed, the misty fog around you became thicker and darker, but you never noticed. Before you even realized something was very wrong, a big shadow crept up on you, getting closer every second. You stand there, waiting, wondering what is about to appear in front of you. I have a bad feeling about this. Let's see how you handle this one. Some say, kill or be killed. I guess that's what you should be thinking right now. Danger! Your party is being attacked. We didn't get to choose the difficulty of this fight, and there is one elite. There's an elite bat over here. Now, as far as I can tell, the elites are actually immune to stuns, or at least the one or two I fought at this point. So that's kind of annoying, because if there's anything you'd like to stun with your people, it would be that. On the other hand, a lot of times you might fight an elite alone, or mostly alone. Like, it would be pretty easy to just, like, AoE down these guys, or at least ignore them. So being able to stun lock the one foe would be a little weird. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the meteor. We might be able to wipe this down to just the one, indeed. And that's actually pretty decent damage. But that, speaking of decent damage, I got hit hard. So I actually have to make a choice here with my uh, cleric if I should be healing um, my uh, my guest here, my mage, or just attacking. I'm gonna go ahead with the attack. I'm gonna use a smite because it should do extra damage, and hopefully we can get some aggro over here. We'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, my rogue will go ahead and use the double strike, and hopefully do decent. And we will now use our Fireball, which might not do that much because it's a little low level, although it does tick um, every round, so that's good too. Hey, we got some fur. Plus one XP. Can someone order pizza? So we will actually give the fur to our cleric here, so she'll get plus one XP all the time and level up a little bit faster. Um... Oh yeah, we've got a targeted heal, but I think I'm going to just circle of healing for now. And I'll put another level in my fireball for single target stuff, because I'm sure later on we're going to need more of that. Um, and put some more points into the poison, just because I don't have... Is it still? Yeah, it's going to keep increasing the mana points by two, which is a lot. So the passive seems like a good idea. I could also grab the Vanish uh, in case anything ever goes horribly, horribly wrong. Because I don't think I'm very tanky. Well, I'm not very untanky. All right, we'll go with the passive here. And that's it for the skill points. Continuing on. All right! You defeated the Bat King. This will make the other bats too afraid to leave here and reach the village. Now you should return to Default Village. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear what you've done. So we're going to go ahead and travel back over there and turn in the quest. Rolling for random encounters. 
looks like we got there okay. I hope that girl gives me something handy, if you know what I mean. Really? Ugh. <laughs> uh, stop that, yeah. Uh, young man. Hello, I'm Commoner Girl's boyfriend. You've proven a good friend to all of us. Re you refer to Com- that's really her name. Quest done. You're the default village heroes. 2000 XP, that's apparently not enough to level up again. So that's fine. At this point, we've got an extra XP to get a good amount of uh, different abilities, so that's nice. Uh, we're going to continue on just to the next leg of this quest, and then we're going to end this video. I mean, we don't want to, you know, go through the entire campaign here, because eventually you're going to want to play. So, the next, uh, the next starred quest for uh, the main storyline is this travel quest. Again, you know, we can decide to backtrack and do some collections. Um, or the escort quest. I'm gonna go ahead and do the travel quest though to get to the next location So we need to travel to Sunset Castle now that you've become the default village heroes You gain a lot of attention walking around the village random NPC OMG a hero among us hug Ugh. While drinking and having fun at the tavern a piece of paper was dropped on your table make a roll check Maybe you noticed who dropped the note Rolls one Well, you think the note is a love letter from the barman? You take the note and start reading it. It says, Something strange is happening at Sunset Castle. The king might be in danger. I'm sorry, I can't reveal myself yet. Alright, let's go to the castle. I know a quest hook when I hear it. Place for kings, queens, and princesses. What, no princes? Gonna travel across to the castle. Another good roll, no random encounters. And... What's beer? Oh, here's the blacksmith. Success rate, 35%. Oh, to upgrade our actual items. Upgrade blacksmith to unlock new items, or we can level up the chainmail for extra health. Oh, I hadn't actually seen this before. Interesting. Um, and there's a tavern. Leave characters at the tavern to open space at your table. Oh! Is that Hagar the Horrible? Huh. Um, oh, that's very interesting. So we can swap out different characters here, maybe for different quest types, level up different people. It's like playing Pokemon. All right, let's um, let's just continue on with the quest. As you get closer to the Sunset Castle, you have a terrible feeling. A strange feeling of evil emanates from within the castle. I guess we should continue anyway. The strange feeling stays with you as you walk up to the castle gate. Rolls dice. Guards have noticed your presence by the gate. Guard number one. Oh look, it's the prisoners that escaped from Tower Prison the other day. Oh. Get them! Prepare yourselves for battle. Seven castle guards. How tough are we talking about? 65... Oh, right, they're level seven. I think we're going to take this in uh, two chunks. We're going to do a group of four, and then a group of three, because this... This is... Oh, it's actually telling us this is a hard fight. All right, we're only a group of three people. You know what? I'm going to do a group of three first, and we'll see how it goes. Ten damage?! And I got a, an attack debuff as well. Yeah, see my attack is dropped here. That's what the, uh, the purple marks say. Oh, that is less than ideal. Um, I'm trying to decide if I should fireball each one. You know, what in turn to... Uh, to focus fire to burn them down. Or if I should just do my meteor. You know what, I should fireball one. And then meteor from... No, meteor first. There's three of them. The total damage is better, even though it means we're going to take a little bit more damage. Um, Alright, Rogue is up. I'm going to use a stun attack on the next guy in the initiative order, which is this guy here. So, concussion blow this guy. So he won't be able to attack on his turn. Didn't do much damage, but again, I was debuffed, so that's understandable. So this guy lost his turn. Now it's going to be my Cleric. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit this guy as hard as I can, hopefully draw aggro, so we're going to smite him. Alright. Okay, he did attack me, although there's still some attack going on in my rogue, which sucks. I'm gonna go ahead and do another meteor. Most of the way down. Now it's my rogue's turn. Um, I'll stun this guy again, and then my cleric will drop a heal next round instead. Concussion blow. There, did 13 damage this turn, which is better. Although it pales in comparison to what my, pre uh, my mage does. On the other hand, it did include a stun, which has some value. So, let's do a circle of healing. It's not actually quite enough to top it off. It'd be better if I had the targeted heal. I've got the attack damage debuff. I don't know if that affects spells, though. Let's find out. 
It apparently does not. That's good to know. Now my rogue is going to use a double strike on number one, I think, because I think it'll be too much overkill on number four, although it means... You know what? No, we're going to go for the kill on number four. And then hopefully the cleric will be able to finish him off. Does it smite? And it does. Good! Okay, that was very tough. We're gonna- oh, we got a potion, though. And a bunch of XP. We did get a level up, because those guys were level 7, but now we're level 7 as well, which is gonna help a lot. I'm gonna grab one direct heal. In fact, I'm not convinced the circle of healing is the way to go, especially in a three-person party. I don't know. We'll pick that up, so we've got an emergency button. Uh, alternatively, I could grab the weakening and just debuff a whole lot, but... I don't think that's the way we want to go. Um... Yeah, it increases the damage, like, only by a little, and the cost is going up quite a bit. Let's improve the fireball. Hey, Rogue here. I'm wondering if he almost needs a vanish at this point. Alright, oh, also lowers physical resistance, which is pretty cool. Oh, and the mana cost goes up quite a bit. Although I have more now. You know, we're gonna grab more double strike. I really hope double strike stacks with the poison. If not, I, I think the concussion blow leveling up might even be better. Uh, but we'll see. Okay, so everyone's leveled up at this point. Let's um, let's take on four guards at once. Now we should be okay. Rogue goes first. Let's go and start with the uh, Concussion Blow and the next guy to act. Should probably just level up Concussion Blow. Meteor all the things, especially since there's four of them now. Okay, I actually like it when they hit my Cleric, because my Cleric can smite and self-heal pretty effectively. Um, let's focus fire on number two over here. Good. Now my Rogue. Actually, I'm wondering... Ooh, it's tough. You know what, I'm going to smite number three, and I'm going to hope the Meteor kills them all. Or not smite, uh, Concussion Blow number three. So we're going to take one attack from two, and then Meteor. Got him. Okay, good. Yes, keep attacking there, although I am getting a little bit low. Smite. Um, smite number two, hopefully kill. Good. Good heal. And now we're going to turn to double strikes. Um, it's fireball 4 does good damage and should tick again on his turn like that yeah the fireball is huge damage single target but immense smite alright good job good xp another mana potion noble level up I guess defeating the guards was easier than I thought. Yeah, whatever. You head to King's room. Everything is quite different from last vi your last visit to this room. It feels deathly cold, as if the heat from the sun had never reached here before. A chill runs down your spine. You were so surprised by how the room looked that you didn't notice the king wasn't on his throne. Let's look around the room. Actually, this is the grandma. Let's look around the room. Maybe the king was afraid of us and hid himself. Our reputation around here is kind of low these last days. You search near the throne, and when you get close, the door to the room slams shut with a deafening bang. You look back, and the king is in front of the door, staring back at all of you. His eyes are glowing red. Cursed king. You are not welcome in this castle. I shall... I put you in jail so you would not bother my plans. Incompetent guards, I'll extinguish you from this world for good. Party is being attacked. Alright, so we got two guards and the king. Uh, Rogue goes first. I think I'm in a concussion blow a guard. The king will be immune to it. So we'll try to minimize a little bit of the damage we take. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and meteor with a lot, and then we're going to try to pick off the guards after that. And actually, the, the cleric... Actually, you know what? I'm going to drop a fireball on the king so the damage ticks away. It's a little risky. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. I 
god for smite. Alright. And I don't think the meteor is going to kill the guard as is, and I really want to get a finishing blow. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to concussion blow this guy, and then we'll be able to meteor and kill him. See, he's still burning. There we go. Good. Okay, now we're starting to get into some strategy. Um, we are going to smite him. Hopefully our rogue doesn't die. It'd be nice to have that vanish ability, but... Oh well. Uh, I'm gonna go and concussion blow the guard. So he's got the stun thing on. And then I think I'm gonna... Re the fireball is still ticking away, really? Two turns. I would have thought two turns had already... Gone. Uh, maybe I should meteor and then finish this guy off with the uh, priest. I guess that makes sense. All right. Hopefully the rogue doesn't get attacked. We're gonna go to double strikes. Oh yeah, it auto targets when there's just the one guy left. Uh, oh, my my mage actually doesn't have enough mana left for another fireball or anything. Now I could drink a mana potion. Doesn't use the entire turn though. I think I'll just auto attack. We'll be okay. Double strike for the win! Victory! Tons of XP. And we got a bronze medal, which gives plus five health to whoever we wears it. Level up. Let's go ahead and do that right away. More smite. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the stream at this point, since magic in these long fights is starting to get a little low. Plus, this will increase the amount of damage we do. And you know what? We will grab one Vanish just to make sure that we've got an emergency button, if need be. Alright, what say you? The Dark Presence is gone. The King's eyes are no longer glowing red. This place now feels exactly like the last time you were here. That is really impressive. Ugh, what is happening here? Was it a bad dream? We believe a dark presence took control of you in this castle, but apparently it's gone away now. <gasps> the curse has gone! Oh, what have I done? Thank you, knights of pen and paper. You saved me and my kingdom from the madness that came over me. But what happened? A few months ago, my guards and I spotted a powerful mage in the forest. He was performing a forbidden ritual using a huge black stone. We tried to stop him from doing anything. All we could do was break the huge stone into little pieces. Hmm, maybe there will be a quest to check for these little pieces. Keep that in mind, the game has just started. Unfortunately, we did not succeed and the mage trapped us in this nightmare, in that nightmare. I do not know where he is right now. All I remember is that he needed all four artifacts from our pen and paper world. We must not let this happen. We'll try to look further into the situation. I believe the villagers would be anxious to hear the good news. So here we go again. And I am going to bring this video to a conclusion. If you would like to play Knights of Pen and Paper, you can find it on Steam as well as other websites. I'll make sure to include links in the description box down below. Uh, it is not a very expensive game. It's great, great fun. And uh, I hope you enjoy the story as much as I did. Certainly, if you've played Dungeons & Dragons in real life before, I think you will get a real kick out of playing this game. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.